Good morning, good morning, Jackson Chapel. Good morning to all our Facebook friends that is home this morning. Like I said, it's a blessing to be in the house of the Lord one more time. And this morning we would start off with a prayer. And if everyone would bow your heads for a moment of prayer, we would like to say thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for allowing us to just be in your presence one more time. And Heavenly Father, we just come to give thanks to you this morning. Thank you for your Son. Thank you for the Holy Spirit who you have placed here. The leads and guides in the way that you would have us to go. And as I pray this morning, Heavenly Father, I pray for our sick and shut in. Pray for the ones in the hospital. Pray for the ones incarcerated. Pray for the ones in the rest homes this morning, Heavenly Father. But Heavenly Father, you set up high and look low, Heavenly Father. You know their needs this morning, Heavenly Father. And I ask you that you pray to continue to bless them this morning, Heavenly Father. And Heavenly Father, bless our whole entire nation this morning, Heavenly Father. But Heavenly Father, you see what we're dealing with each and every day, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, just you just do your will, Heavenly Father. We just will continue to believe and trust in you, Heavenly Father, and just follow your lead, Heavenly Father. We just ask these blessings in your name, your Son, and the Holy Spirit, that all the saints say, Amen. 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 Our devotional reading will be coming from Philippians chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. That's Philippians chapter 3. Verses 1 through 4. Let the church say amen when you found it. Is there 4 or 14? 14. That's 14, Father. Yeah, Philippians chapter 3, verses 1 through 14? Uh -huh. 14, baby. Okay. 1 through 14. Finally, my brother, rejoice in the Lord to write the same things to you, to me indeed, is not grievous, but for you it is safe. Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the six consciences for this, for we are circumcised, circumcision, which worship God in spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, and if any other man thinketh that he have whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel and the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of Hebrews, as touching the law, a Pharisee. Concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ? Ye doubtless, and I count all things but lost for excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dug, that I may win Christ. And be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I might know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering, being made conformable unto his death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I have already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, and if that I may apprehend, that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brother, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing that I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press towards the mark for the prize of high calling of God in Christ Jesus. The word from God, for the people of God, and let all the saints say, Amen. Amen. Now we will turn over to our teaching today will be brought none other than Brother Wyatt Jr. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, thank you, Brother Frank, for this opportunity to give you this hard lesson. <laughs> uh, today, uh, Brother Carl had read about Brother uh, Paul, Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul was commissioned to speak to the Gentiles with, with us, to help us be grafted in to the, to, the, uh, to the promise of God that he had gave to the Israelites. 
And that's the issue that we have today. That the scriptures that we, the uh, lesson text, come from Acts 26, 1 through 11. My brother Frank, the story on how we got this far is so long. It's a long story of how we got to this part. The, the keepers, Paul said, and now I stand here on trial on the account of my hope for the promise made by God to our ancestors. And that's what that's where the issue came up. I said that Paul was commissioned to come to the Gentiles. And years ago, uh, Reverend Ronald John preached on how uh, outside influences and outside things coming to the church. And Brother Franklin, the Jews considered the Gentiles, you know how we can they consider the Gentiles. But when the Jews came, when the Gentiles came into being Christians and come into the congregation, they still wanted them to leave that stuff out there, but they wanted them to take on the stuff that they were doing. They wanted them to, to drop the stuff that they were doing and pick up all the rules and regulations they were still trying to live by. And when, uh, when Paul when Paul went back and started telling the apostles and telling the church that the Gentiles had got saved and they had received the Holy Ghost and everything, it was a big uproar about it. And they had a they had a church conference like we do in, in the uh, in the headquarters with James and the big uproar. The big Pharisees like Frank. They had they had a conference that they decided or they ruled on the things that the Gentiles was able to do because they weren't able to, they were supposed to live by what we live by. We, we ain't doing it ourselves. It was about that. I'm going to get to that in a minute. Well, Paul was invited in, into Jerusalem, but he said himself that he must go to Jerusalem because he had been called there to be briefed about what was going on. And he was, had heard about what was going on with the Gentiles. He was happy that the Gentiles were joining the church and, and that they were being filled with the Holy Ghost like they was and they were, he was so glad about it. But there was a sect in the church that they say they were most like the Pharisees, I mean the Sadducees. The, the Pharisees, the issue was Jesus being raised from the dead. That's where the issue came from. The Pharisees, they believed in it but they still wanted them to be lived by the law and especially get circumcised. But the Sadducees didn't. They wanted to hold on to their power by any means. If it being going along with the Roman government, if it being me and me keeping the Gentiles in the one little corner and everything, if they were going to be a Republican, I mean, I mean, they were going to be that way anyway. Even in our day and time, we see, without getting into politics, we see we got two fashions. We got the Democrats and the Republicans. One believe one thing, one believe another. But in some cases, when they're bickering against each other, the people that they're supposed to be serving being left out. That's what happened in this issue. They were battling so much against each other about rules and regulations that the Christian church was being left out and Paul was called to Jerusalem and James and they want to hear about what was going on. Well when Paul was called in Jerusalem, this commentary that I found said that this group of Christians is called Judaizers. Have you heard that before? Judaizers? Yeah. I don't know how to say Judaizers. Judaizers? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Ju thank you. Judaizers. They were strict on following the law. Like you said, Brother Paul. You can be a Christian. That's what they said. Mm -hmm. You can be a Christian, but you still got to follow the law to the left. One thing you needed to do was be circumcised to prove that you was a Jew. Well, they wasn't Jews. It wasn't their custom. 
They received the same thing from Christ as the original Christians, but the Jew, what did you say, what? Judaizers. Judaizers didn't see it that way. They see, they see their point of view. So there was an uproar. There was an uproar in the area. They say in the city, there was an uproar in the area. And when everything got out of, out of, out of pocket and folks started riding and stuff, the Roman, which is the police, they had to get involved. The head of the Roman, the, the, uh, the centurion, or what do you want to call it, he seen Paul, he seen what was going on, so he brought you know, the Judaizer, had Paul arrested, so he brought him in, and was going to interrogate him. Mm -hmm. by, by, like I said, by any means. Put him in there and ask him what's going on. Paul said what's going on. He ain't a Jew, so he don't know the customs and everything. So he still want to interrogate. Why, why is all this problem going on? They saying one thing about Paul. Paul saying it ain't true. So he was actually going to flog Paul. And can you know what flogging is? Don't you? There's been time of beating. Then Paul took out a trump card and said, why are you going to beat me and I'm a Roman citizen? That stopped everything. In those days, if you were a Roman citizen, even though you didn't look like one, but uh, Paul actually was one, you had certain rights. We call them that in our society, civil rights. You just couldn't beat a Roman soldier for no reason. You got to have it. He had a right to defend himself. So, Paul said, I want to go to the council. Paul said to himself, I want to go, I want a trial. I want to prove what I'm saying. When we are not in this situation, we are blessed to live in a country where we are not persecuted. We are not persecuted because of our religious belief. We're not. We might not believe it. We think we got the right to don't believe in nothing if we don't want to. But you do have the right to believe it in whatever denomination you want to be in. And in this country, you don't go on trial for being a Christian. But there will be places and times where you need to defend your faith. Because I work in a plant with several denominations. I mean, strong people in that denomination. No. I worked in, in a plant where people didn't believe in nothing. I, I came up against an atheist one time was so powerful in what he thought he knew that you had to have Jesus. You had to have the Spirit of God to deal with this joke because this joke was saying stuff that had what made sense to me. <laughs> it did. But, but he didn't know what he was talking about. It took my faith and now I'm growing. I wouldn't waste time talking to him now. But what he was saying, the rest of the people in the world, in, in the room, was listening to him. He could have influenced a whole lot of people. When my kids go off to college, and they can be, and I know, I, I, I know from experience, when our kids go off to college, they introduce to people with all kind of beliefs, all kind of stuff. Then they come home and question you about them things. That you ain't, you know, you don't even entertain that foolishness, but you got to be a strong Christian in your faith to be able to defend yourself on that. One of the one of the uh, greatest compliments, I, I, this is my slogan, but all one of the greatest slogans that anybody can throw at you is, I remember when you used to. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. One of the emails, when, when somebody come up out the world and tell you, you know what? You so holy now. I remember when you used to. Yes, sir. That's good. Don't why are you gonna get mad at that? Because they see a change in you. Brother Jones preached four or five years ago about all this stuff that coming in. You were talking about preaching about music. All this stuff coming in the church and everything. If people was out there with you and seeing you being a good whatever you was out there, and you come in here. And they see what you is in here, and they mention it. That means you see, they see a change in you. Yes, sir. We shouldn't be offended by that. These people was putting Paul on trial because he had changed. It was two times that he, he gave his testimony 
about what he had did and what he had went through when he didn't get knocked down off the beast. <laughs> that came up. When he saw the light and made him, made him see the light. That reminded me of a, of a story of my own experience. I worked with a white deacon. I'm gonna call him that. He was a white guy. He was a deacon. I was a newly thinking about fixing to be Christian. It was on my mind, but I hadn't made it yet. Because every time I get close to making that decision, I go to cussing and stuff and just drop out for a minute when somebody made me mad. So God put me with him. And there was several people in my life to help me help me see, make, make, make me see. So I worked with him day after day. Me and my friend saying them big, long, I mean, long folks, sailor cuss word. And he just didn't say nothing. He could talk about the same thing that we talk about, didn't say a single cuss word. So one day I asked him, why don't you cuss? You know what that joke started doing? Start singing. I saw the light. I saw the light. <laughs> I'll never forget that. It wasn't funny to me. It was, it, it kind of like, it crippled me. It kind of like, it changed me. And he said, I don't have to. He said, I can talk about basketball, football, just like y'all do. He said, God took it from my mouth. I won't do it. He saw the light. Paul, I know it's a long story. I'm going to get to the verses, but they didn't they say, they say how come he was on trial. Paul was the same thing. Paul did the same thing. Paul was brought up as a Pharisee. Mm -hmm. He learned for the greatest Pharisee. Gamaliel, what's his name? Gamaliel. Gamaliel. I got that right. He learned from him and everything. And then when Paul became a persecutor, a prosecutor, he was a persecuted prosecutor. If he knew that this part of town, that these families or something was Christian, he would go get papers, like arrest warrants, and he would bring them to him to be tried. Sometimes some of them would even be killed. Paul used to do that. And he, bro, all he was good at. Now, when Paul gave his testimony like we should, Paul mentioned that he did those things. He was testifying. He wasn't bragging. When you said, who, who, who was preaching and said they was a good sinner? When you say you was a good sinner and you standing in the right, you ain't bragging about it. you actually saying, if God can save me, he can save you. That's right. Because I was with you. You wasn't doing it because you weren't doing it because you just accidentally slipped up and did it. You did it because you liked it. Paul liked tracking down people and putting them to death and putting them in jail for following the way. That's what they call it, following the, the way. Following that Jesus stuff. Doing what Jesus said. So Paul tracked them down death to death. Now guess what? He in the same predicament. Now they're trying him for the thing he used to try people for. That's right. Paul, hmm? yeah, Paul, a verse said that Paul, Jesus told Paul, told somebody that Paul would be, Paul would be a witness for me, but he's going to go through a lot of stuff for my sake. Because Jesus, said, okay, since you're going to be a tool, you out here sharpening those skills on how to do stuff, I'm going to flip the other side of the axe and you're going to be working for me. So when he was knocked out, when he fell on the ground from <laughs> when he fell on the ground from that light, and those scales on his eyes, he couldn't see, and they took him back. When they took the scales on, he could see better than he ever seen after he took it off. He could see where he was wrong, he could see where he needed to go. That's right. What he needed to do for, for, for Christ. It's all about, I told Brother Oil last month. We're in a unique position down here, church. And I'm going to say it's us, me, Brother Franklin, Brother Orr, now you, and all the preachers. We seem to be on the same line. Now, what I mean by that, you can have different 
theology, theology for belief. You know, you're going to wash feet, you might all wash your right foot, pull your right, wash the left one. That's just a joke. But, then, but us, we, well, I mean, I come in, I love it. We are all on the same line. And that line is everything we talk about is about Jesus. That's right. Everything. Even though the subject today is about Paul, but it's about what Paul did for Jesus. That's right. When we get to the verses, we're going to see Paul was on trial because he was teaching people that Jesus rose from the dead. The most fundamental belief that we have to have. We can't really get where we need to go if we stop and Jesus died on the cross. I had to learn that. I don't even know why the cross with him still on. But well, somebody told me, that's that ain't the whole story. You got to the part where his life stopped earthly, but his eternal life kept going. Or started up. Paul taught that Jesus was seen by other people, but they didn't want it. And it caused a problem between the Republicans and the Democrats. It, it's caused a problem, and they didn't like it. And the power that be, they wanted him arrested for that because he was causing problems. He was going against their belief. They was, they was uh, in high office, and they, they was walking around with their prestige and everything, and Paul messing up all that. So they actually took him to trial just for that. We should be able to witness to people. We should be able to witness before the law. We should be able to witness before government. We should be able to stand before kings like Paul finna do. We should be able to do all that. Now, what we have to do is get rid of our, okay, I can't talk good, or I'm ashamed, or there's people know more than I do. Or look at look at bro. Or you got to get up in front of the camera. Yeah, you see it. I'm telling on you. <laughs> you have to put all that away. I don't want to do it, but I'm gonna do it. That's right. Because of Jesus. That's right. Jesus didn't tell you to stand in front of the camera. That's right. He inspired your pastor to ask you to stand in front of the camera, and you're being obedient. That's right. When you got to share with. When when uh I was on I was on I wasn't on trial, I was at a trial one time. And the lawyer said, How many of y'all don't swear? He said, I ain't talking about cussing. Because how many of all of us will raise our hand? So he said, it's in the text down here is do you swear or affirm? Can you say you affirm? I said, Yeah, we all say we affirm. We were able to still be who we were and don't break our commitment to Christ. Can we do that with a person that we witness it to? How do you know Jesus exists? Or can you come down here in front of everybody in this church and fool and say, yeah, I'm a Christian and explain why? Uh oh I mean, I ain't asking you, but you gotta be you got to be ready to do that in your life situation. Paul was ready to do that. He had went to Jerusalem. He had met with the, met with the, the uh, officials and they had agreed on what the Gentiles to do and everything. Then um, Judah, Judaizers, <laughs> the Judaizers had him arrested when Paul said that he wanted to be interrogated or he want to be on trial and he want to go see the big weeds, the king and stuff, they come up with another plot to assassinate him on the way. Paul nephew told him about it. He told the centurion, centurion put a guard with him and handcuffed himself to him. And he was with him the whole time. And he went went up to uh, Caesarea and there was Agrippa, but it was Agrippa the second, Agrippa Jr. And there was another guy there with his wife. Her name was Bernice. They ain't can't do it yet. So he was before them. He told them he was guilty of it. They interrogated him and everything. And they said 
they didn't even find no reason for this man to be put to death or anything called him death. And they pretty well did him like Jesus. They kept passing him around from one to the other until he get to grip, uh, Agrippa. When he got to Agrippa, that's when the trial started. And Agrippa, and I'm looking for the first, we're going to go to the first verse. Yeah. Acts 26 and 1. Then Agrippa said to Paul, Thou art permitted to speak for thyself. Paul was going to defend himself. And Paul stretched forth his hand and answered himself. I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because I have, I shall answer myself this day before thee, judging all things where I am I accused of the Jews. So, in verse 2, in the first, in, in the first verse, which is self-explanatory, when Paul got on trial, Agrippa gave him permission. It's like, like the judge do now. You have a lawyer, uh, Agrippa gave, gave him permission to, to uh, defend himself. Then Paul said, you know what? I'm kind of glad I got this opportunity to talk to you about these things that the Jews accused me of. What did they accuse me of? They accused him of causing the stir, but the major thing, he is teaching them against our custom before he's teaching them this way. I, I like to play all words of oh, oh, Brother Pam. What did Jesus say? I am the way. The truth. The truth and life. And they call Christians, Christian, the, the Christian faith, they call it the way. And they meant by the way these people worship, the way these people do. And he said, I am being accused by the Jew of this. Then Paul went to explain what this was they was accusing him of. In verse 3, especially because I know thee to be an expert in all customs and questions which is are among the Jews, wherein I beseech thee to hear me. Patiently. Agrippa, this, is, this was Agrippa Jr. Agrippa, King Agrippa's great granddaddy, they say, was Herod the Great. His son, which had turned out to be Herod, was the one that tried to kill Jesus by killing all the two year old kids when Jesus was born. Because why? He knew or he had someone to tell him. The prophecies of what the, the Savior or the Messiah is supposed to be born. He was letting the group know, you've been taught this stuff all your life. <clears throat> you've been taught everything that they're talking about, you've been taught all this stuff on how it goes. You were born and raised in your family. Your parents, your grandparents, all of you, you knew about the prophets, you knew about the prophet, you knew about the ancestors. And he even asked him, do you believe in what your ancestors were saying? Of course, Brother Agrippa said that this, because he, he didn't tell them. He, he deliberated on his defense. You will know about all the things that they accused me of not doing. You know about all the prophets. I'm glad I'm able to stand in front of you. Festus didn't know. Bernice don't know. But he said, you know of all the things that they are talking about. And that will give me an opportunity to prove to you that I'm not against nothing that they're saying. It's just, I got a different way. It ain't my way. I'm following that way. I say this to say it. When we change to be Christian, we don't do nothing our way no more. We shouldn't. That's right. Because our way was making us sinners in the first place. That's right. You said bad way. A week before, and you said that we sinners. We got to see the sin from Adam. When we were born, we had to see them. When we were grown, maybe I told you 18 years ago, the first time your mama tell you don't do nothing and you did it and you know you were wrong, let's see the sin and start going up in you. I don't care how old you were, because it's there. So, what we do when we become that new creature. We don't follow that, that seed no more. We let this seed grow. We go this way. Agrippa had heard, had read 
probably had been in school, had learned about all the things that the Jews were accusing him of not doing. He, he, he knew that Paul, he took advantage of that. He kind of he kind of played and he kind of played on the circumstances. I'm glad I'm getting able to tell you and I'm not talking to some people that just don't know. The Roman person didn't know. That's why Paul had to pull his trump card and tell him, I'm a Roman. You just can't beat. You just can't beat. And, and, and when I first came up, baby, if you was American and you went to a foreign country and, and they did something wrong to you, it's scary when they find out you was American because they, they don't know if they're American to come over here and do something to it. You ain't like that no more, but it, it used to be that when you was a Roman citizen, you had citizen, you had rights. When you was a Jew, you had rights in the Jewish community. Now these Christians coming and they still Jews and Christians, but they still saying you ain't you you not you teaching them contrary to what our ancestors believed. Verse Three. For what I have to say on Paul's conduct here. Yeah. He, he's conducted himself as we should. Uh, he's been falsely accused. And I didn't know they said that he he been in he been in jail similar, kind of almost two years. Mm -hmm. But then he's he's telling this man, I, I appreciate you. You give me a chance to speak. I'm just saying that. We ought to learn how to conduct ourselves. Even though we've been falsely accused and mistreated, that's still a way we ought to conduct ourselves before people. Because that people can still see Christ in us if we kind of act like Paul. And Paul could have had an attitude, because I mean, but he, he didn't. He's very polite. And he should be, because he's no trial, but still, and yet, his conduct. I've just seen, <clears throat> y'all may have saw that on the news. They had an election up in New York. Black man, Jamal Bone, mm -hmm. and he was running for election. And I seen him at one of his speeches, and he was cursing up a storm. Mm -hmm. and I said, goodness gracious, you want to be re-elected? And talking like that? Well, he lost the election. So I don't know what I <laughs> Paul know how to conduct himself, and we should too. When, when, uh, when uh, Roman was been flogging and he, he, he did his appeal, they did. He kept him for two more years. While he was in there, I'm glad you brought that up. But while he was in there, in Acts chapter 9, verse 15, and you said Paul, because the way Paul conducted himself, Paul, God still gave uh, Paul favor while he was in there. Did you know they actually let his friends visit him and stuff while he was in jail? He was on the highway, they would bring him stuff. And they were teaching him, and they were telling him about what was going on in, in the church and stuff. He wrote letters. And he wrote letters. Yeah, he was on the house of arrest. He was still, well, they eventually killed him, but he was still on the arrest. In Acts uh, chapter 9, verse 15, the Lord came to Paul while he was you know, on the house of arrest. And the Lord said to him, Go, because I have chosen. Him to serve me. No, this is the wrong one. It's the wrong one. Okay, yeah. Act, I'm sorry. Acts chapter 23, 11. I'm sorry. That's why he told the man to go see Paul and take his stuff off the hat. Yeah, that's the, but this one was Paul, Jesus talking to Paul. Acts chapter 23, verse 11. That night the Lord stood by Paul and said, Don't be afraid. You have given your witness for me here in Jerusalem. You must also do the same in Rome. So he got arrested in Jerusalem. He appealed to Caesar and they've been taken to Rome. Two years later, he's he, 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 he on trial to have his appeal. You said about this man. That was a chance for him to give his witness and everything. We, and he was about power. I ain't saying you don't vote wrong for policy. I ain't saying that. I ain't gonna say it. Some people think preachers and deacons and ain't case and all of them don't vote to run for policy. I'm not saying that. That's not what I'm saying. But use that platform. Don't let that platform 
Stop you from being a Christian. Don't, don't, don't do it. And we, I, I, don't, even, I don't even like watching the news now. I watched the debate the other day. I watched the debate the other day. <laughs> I watched CNN. I just quit. I'm, I'm, I'm weaning myself. I quit watching. I'm fasting for a whole two weeks. I ain't watching the news. <laughs> because I don't, you know, I don't see how they don't see it. I don't. When I was out there, I didn't see it. Now I'm in here and I see how come they don't see it. But to be able to do what Paul did, have to come from God, and have to be where you can stand up and knowing what you're going to say might get you killed. And Paul did it. The, 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 one of the, the, the subject was saying hope in the Lord. But it said uh, the lesson about a fearless witness. I still say, me myself, I still say, God pick people to do stuff for him. And he give them the ability to be good at it. Sometimes they were good at it before they started doing it for him. But the ability comes from him. I hear athletes say, you know, I give God uh, thanks for me being able to run, and jump, and do the basketball and stuff. They in the words saying that all my ability comes from God even though I'm doing this. I don't see nothing wrong with that. A good speaker is a good speaker. Whether he's speaking out there and especially good if he's speaking in here. God gave you a good It ain't something you just jump up and start doing. That's right. Brother Frank is a good teacher. He's a legalistic teacher. He know all of legalism. <laughs> But he's great. I love it. It's a lot of people. Brother, brother, brother Arthur down the earth, he's in the face teacher. Yeah. That didn't come from him though, but he was a good hit you in the face. Me, I'm a rambler. I have to be told to be a teacher. You ramble good. Okay. But God give me that ain't something I just picked up. Brother, brother Carter, you're a down the earth teacher. Brother Pam, you just like Pam Frank. Pam, you are, he marked you. Because you don't care what you say sometimes. But you God give you that. He teach you what to say and when to say. I give God the glory for everything good. Everything bad comes from somebody else. Sometimes I ain't good, but everything good that we do come from God. Everything Paul did was good. And but God told him, he told uh the people that, that, that went to see him and get off the off his eyes that he gonna be used for my sake. He got out there and did this stuff because he did, he was out there, but I'm gonna use him. And he told Paul, now I want you to go to Rome and talk to these folks over there just like you talk to these here. I want you to teach them. So he was gonna take Paul to Rome to stand before Caesar. Verse Okay, verse 4. My manner, Acts chapter 6, verse 4. My manner of life from my youth, which was at the first among my own nation as a Jew, know all the Jews. Verse 5. Which knew me from the beginning, if they would testify that after the most strictest sect, of our religion, I live as a Pharisee. He told Agrippa, I learned all this stuff from my youth. I learned about the prophets. I learned about the prophecy. I learned about the promises. I learned about God. I learned about what God did in the wilderness. I learned about what God did to the prophets. I learned what God did to the people. I know about all of this. And you do too. He said, I know about it from my youth. When I got grown, he said, I belong to the strictest sect that it was, the Pharisees. The Pharisees were some rough people. The Pharisees would kill you for blaspheming. The, black, the Pharisees would kill you for breaking the law because they had what they thought they had the legal right to do because they had them ten 
that said that they could. That's right. We know who the ten is. Thou shalt not. Them thou shalt not. We got a lot of folks killed. But well, he was he belonged to that sect. I elaborated when I first started. I don't know who made Paul the head prosecutor. I don't know. Then they never. I uh, didn't find out what, what it was, but he would. He used to have papers to go get people, to get them, have them killed. Stephen was one. Of, it didn't say that he was. Was he there? Yeah, he was there. Yeah. Stephen was stoned. Mm. When Stephen was stoned, mm. he was there. Okay. Because he went volunteer after, after all the other ones started fleeing the, the city. He went volunteer and said, I go. Send me. He wanted to be the one to go and bring right. that. Now he, 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 he had papers to go get him. Right. So he, he held the code with Nate, the Pharisee. Uh, I think that right when he was dying, he said that he see. He seen in heaven then. Okay. They would throw a rock upside your head. They were stoning them. I, I said that way they did. They would throw a rock upside your head for any amount of the law that they thought you broke. And they would get together and rule on it. They already knew when they get in there, don't take them two or three. But they would get in there and all of them said, yep, he did. They were strict and Paul was one of them. He said he, he, and that's what I said from the beginning. He ain't bragging about it. He's testifying about it. He's saying, they accusing me now of doing what I used to accuse people of doing. The same stuff that, that they saying I'm doing, they're going to be accusing me. And you know I know better than that. I'm, I, I know that from my youth. He said in verse, verse 26. Yeah, 20, 25. Uh, chapter 25 verse 5 he said you know, from the beginning, he said if they would testify to this they would tell you yeah he was a Pharisee if they would do it if they would come up and they would tell you the truth the same people that accused me of disrupting everything Acts 26 and 6 now I stand and am judged for the hope of the promise made to God Unto our Father, he was he was judged for the hope of the promise, the promise that a Savior would come and save us from our sins, and we shall live forever. Okay, so when first for that to happen, he was dead, he was killed, he rose from the dead, and now he lives forever. And the Pharisees and the Sadducees split. Bro, I don't know why they didn't believe. I just don't. I didn't get that. And all my stuff, we read other folks' commentary. How could they get right to that part and don't believe the rest of it? They call them blind. They were still blind. They, they believed in the Jesus. They just didn't believe in Jesus. Jesus. I did see that one commentary said they did. They, they believed in some aspect of a resurrection at the end. With everybody, with the, with the Pharisees, the Sadducees, yeah, the Sadducees, they couldn't, they just, you know, like the Lord said, they just couldn't see it. They couldn't see, they couldn't see. Uh, wrong way to say because it one instance where that group, the Sadducees, said that Jesus was that bad. He was, he was that all that all powerful. How come he let them kill him? Y'all got a weak savior if he don't mess around and get killed. So they were looking at, 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 at all the way human. If he was God, he was like, why why he get killed? He couldn't, he couldn't stop it. But frankly, the, the, the Pharisees believed in it in a way, but Sadducees didn't believe in it at all. And they showed up and believed Jesus was born. Paul teaching these folk, yeah, but he knew he was. Folks seen him. He showed himself on the thousand proof that we still alive. He showed him. They said, well, he didn't be killed for saying that. So that's what he was on trial for. That's why he's standing in front of the king. Okay. King Agrippa sitting there listening to all this stuff. And he analyzed everything he said. 
the Romans, they didn't know about it. They didn't know about Jewish customs and Jewish law and Jewish, uh, Jewish, uh, the community. But, hmm, sir, but these people, the ones that even, these three, these three kings and judges and the judges' wife and all that, they had some way. That's the first thing that King of Rivers' granddaddy did is when he seen that the, the, we three kings of Orient are, when they came, when they came there and told him we come to see the king of the Jews, the first thing he did is went to the, the, the prophets and the, the writings. What did he say? What did that folk to have man? He didn't send people out to find him just like that. He went to the scriptures too. What did he say? He was going to be born. So that means his family knew about it. They knew about it. And Paul played on that. Paul played on that. Paul played on every word of it. That you know. And if they would testify, they would tell you, I, I came from the, I was, I was bad. I was coming from the strictest form. And they accuse me of stuff that's just not true. Acts 26 and 7. He talked about the promise that was made unto the fathers. And um, um, 7 was unto which promise was our 12 tribe. Instantly serving God day and night. And hope to come, for which hope's sake I, Agrippa, am accused of the Jew. The hope is for a Savior come to save us from our sins and to give us eternal life. That was the hope. That was my hope. That hope started, Paul saying, that hope started in me believing on the person that gave us the eternal life. He was more than just a mere man. He was more than a good person. He was more than just a prophet. And he ain't dead. He's not. That's what he's saying. We got witnesses. We got people who've seen him. Then that's when uh, Paul went into his monologue and went into his testimony on what happened to him on the road to Damascus. He even told that. Of what happened to I met him myself. That's right. And he told me what to do. He told me I was going to be here. He told me I was going to go to Rome. In verse 8, 26 and 8. Why should it be thought a thing incredible to you that God raised the dead? Bro, why is it so incredible? I'm talking to them. You know I mean? I'm used to your, your analogy. Why is it so incredible? But you, they knew about God part of the Red Sea. They knew he could do power stuff. He part of the Red Sea and brought them out of Egypt. But they can't believe what he said. I'm going to set the Savior to save the Savior's sin. Save, 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 save. He won't die no more. I know what you say. They, they don't see it. But he asked them, why can you believe some of it and don't believe all of the promise? Why do you believe that I told your dad that I shall make him the father of many nations, not just this nation, that the Gentiles was going to get what y'all got? That went through a mouth, bro. No. We are the chosen people. We are God's people. Now nobody's going to have this but us. I uh, uh and Kate came up and Kate, y'all did too, bro. Y'all came up through the tough time rougher than we were. I came up through I seen I seen one sign, but I couldn't drink in this water fountain. And I asked Dad how come. And he told them, they think they better than we are, and they don't want us to drink out of their water bottle. Just imagine a whole nation. We live in a nation with the people that do that. But imagine a whole nation of people that thought they were better than everybody when God told them, oh, well, I'm going to make them part of your nation. I'm going to make them part. They're going to be part of the nation that I create. It ain't their nation. God said, I'm going to create a nation out of you. You're going to be a father of many nations. They're going to be in it. But they just don't. Well, we had it first and we do this because we go by these rules and they don't. They eat 
red. They eat wrong. They dress wrong. They don't sing the right song. Does that sound familiar? We was first. Jesus gave, gave a, a parable one time about how he called people to do stuff and some go out in the morning, and some go out at 12, and some go out at 2, and some go out at 3. Then at the end, at 6 o'clock, he paid everybody. He said, I'm going to go work, I'm going to give you a penny. Said, yeah, you go work, I'm going to give you a penny. And you go quiet or ten dollars, whatever. But some went to work at 10, some went to work at 11, some went to work at 3, some went to work at 5. Then at the end of the day, he gave everybody the same amount of money. And then the people that worked first said, how, how come you paying them? And the, and, the, and, the, and the man said, hey, it's my money to do what I want to with it. You agreed to do it for this. God had them to come through and plow the ground and plant the tree. Paul came through, took the seed of us, the, the Gentile, spliced us on to the nation. So that parable and that promise came through that we will be a part of that many nations that he's going to see. And Paul, to wrap it up, Paul told him, said, that's what I'm accused of. They even said, if this man had not appealed to Paul, we would let him go. He, he would have been free. So, let us, if I can leave anything with you, let us be prepared to give a witness. We might not never have to go to court and tell the judge I'm a Christian. But sometime in our life, our loved one, Nadine, somebody we know seen that you walk around and be all holy and stuff and be able to talk and without getting mad, explain to them why I am the way I am now. Thank you all. I'm going to turn over to Brother Thank you, Brother Wyatt. Wonderful lesson this morning. Do we have a review by the young class? Good morning. Good morning. Our lesson story was Paul tells about his hope. So in today's lesson, Paul tells that he was on trial for his life because he told everybody. Um, the Jews and Gentiles about Jesus. But Paul wanted you to know that he thought just like his accusers. Under the order of the chief priests, he even put people in prison and even death because they were Christians and they believed in Jesus. So he was letting them know, I was just like you, but just be patient and hear me out. I'm not like that anymore. That was the old Paul. So now, because he believed in the hope of God and that Jesus saved him, he dedicated his life to tell others about God. So he wants us to keep our belief and hope in God. Amen. 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 Wonderful review. My lovely wife. <laughs> <laughs> Paul thought he was a Christian. Uh, Y'all have heard me say this many times. A lot of times we think we're Christians. Paul thought he was a Christian. He thought he was doing God's will. But when he realized that he wasn't a Christian, and that's when the hope transformed us, meaning that when Paul realized that he had to change, and God showed him that you're not a Christian because Christians don't kill Christians. But he was killing Christians because he thought that was the right thing because they were believing in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So when Paul realized that he was doing wrong, he changed. And when he changed, everything else changed about him. And that's what folks fail to realize. His own people thought that he was, because he was a Pharisee, they hated him. He done betrayed us. He done went on the opposite side. Because that was his job, was to protect God's name. But he realized he was doing wrong. And he just wanted to change. And that's what the same way it is about us. Every individual in here has done wrong in their lifetime. And we have made some changes in our life. Brother Wyatt said it this morning. Yeah, folks going to bring up your past. Brother Frank said, how could Paul be so patient? Because he knew he was doing what was right. 
when you're doing what is right, you have no reason to get angry. You have no reason to get mad. Because righteousness is in you. Now, when you're wrong, yes, you're going to curse. You're going to be angry. You're going to say stuff that, 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 that you shouldn't say. That's because you're angry and you don't know. Look at Trump. For example, look at him. Everybody want to talk about Biden. Biden is a good man. God's going to take care of Biden. God's going to take care of Biden because Biden is a good man. Trump, God is exposing Trump for who he is, and here we are calling ourselves Christians and still want to be a follower of Trump. We're doing wrong. That's wrong. And this is Paul, this part of Paul's lesson, but we know that we're transformed, we change for the best. That's what Paul is trying to show us. Any questions or comments before we close? If not, we'll close with a closing prayer. Everyone by your heads. Gracious God, thank you for your opportunity to share this message of hope with others. And as we yield to the Holy Spirit, continue transforming us into the image of your Son, Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.